an attachment, for lack of a better word, that pops into my mind, to, to the people, the First Nations that were here before us. I think we've got a lot to learn from them. Um, we're not here for a long time, we're only here for a short time. So if we all walk with a bit of respect and treat each other with the same respect, I think we'd all be much happier. Um, there's some big change happening in the world. Not that I'm trying to turn this into a political speech, but um, how about the crazy Korean bloke talking to that other not so crazy Korean bloke? Um, he actually crossed over the line yesterday. I think it was. It's pretty bloody amazing because um, I remember the days when everyone lived on uh, on the edge, not knowing whether some idiot was going to press a big red button. So I'm glad that. Okay. Um, enough of the formality and the not so formality. Um, a big hand of applause for Ian. I know that he's just there. Look at that. <laughs> so a big mouth for Ian. Now, for those of you that remember, this is Ian's second show here. Um, absolutely amazing body of work that he's just spat out in, in crazy speed because I was only talking to him about this show. Um, what seems like only a couple of months ago, and then he's got all this body of work. And the crazy man has already booked another show for <laughs> next year, Ian, is that right? Yep, same time. Same time next year, so um, I, I, I'll see all your faces here again next year with another, another book launch. Um, five. Now, five. Five book launches. Because, you know, why put the bar here when you can have it here, right? Um, now, of course, you're not here to listen to me, you're here to listen to Ian, but most importantly, we've got a special guest who was here last year. Um, Luke, Luke Carmen, come on, come on forward, please. Uh, okay, so um, thank you uh, for the generous introduction, and thanks, Ian, for letting me do this, uh, for letting me speak again. I don't know if you know, but uh, I'm a writer. Uh, I'm a writer from Western Sydney, and for writers, uh, just to, to let you know quickly, uh, the opportunity to speak is kind of like a job interview. Uh, in a way, because uh, the idea is if I can prove to an audience that maybe I have a way with words, maybe somebody in the audience will want to uh, give me some money for uh, putting words together. Uh, that sounds like a desperate kind of idea, but uh, just to give you an example, uh, I did the, the speechifying at Ian's previous launch, previous event, and directly after he asked me to be involved uh, with the next collaboration, which is this beautiful book here. Uh, which I encourage everybody to buy as soon as I, as I stop talking. Um, although you can, if you really need to, you can buy it while I'm talking, I suppose. Um, but uh, uh, it was a huge deal to be asked to contribute to this collaboration, not least because, uh, in my opinion anyway, the previous collaboration between Ian and Hugh Newton, who's the other writer for this book, uh, not only worked, but it worked so well that it seemed to me they were kind of flirting with disaster to invite somebody else to get involved with the equation. And I really desperately didn't want to be like the third wheel to their uh, artistic marriage. Um, so I took it really seriously. Uh, but even though I took it seriously, I was not prepared whatsoever for the focus and the productive capacity of Ian as an artist. Uh, he gave us six months to put this book together and within three months, he had done pretty much every painting that you see here. Uh, and Hugh and I barely had spoken about what we were going to do. So we were in a real fix. We, we struggled to get things done. Uh, and in fact, I can speak for my own self. Like Ian, not only is the painter, but he's also, uh, he has a full-time job. And he has a, a huge family. Uh, myself and Hugh, we barely have any jobs. And we barely have any family. Uh, <laughs> and we missed the deadline, but he got in half the time that he gave to us. But despite all that, despite the discrepancy between the artistic productivity of Ian and myself and Hugh, uh, I can say that I'm reasonably uh, proud of the effort that I did to put this book together, and I'm really proud of being involved with Ian and Hugh. I think it's a fantastic book, uh, and it's reasonably priced, so there's really no reason for you not to buy at least one or two copies uh, before you leave this evening. Um, also, it's not just that Ian is a family man, a hard-working class boy, and a fantastic painter, but he also did another book in the meantime while he was waiting for us to catch up, which I highly recommend that you buy, uh, uh, which he co-wrote with his son, which I think is absolutely fantastic, and I'll be buying a copy or three uh, for my own children, uh, of which there is one, but I'm sure he can share them with his friends and so on. And I encourage you, uh, if you have any kids of your own, 
you really are doing them a disservice in their development if you don't buy this book for them. Um, <laughs> when the book was completed, uh, that Ian and Hugh and myself wrote, uh, I was given the job of writing the blurb on the back, so I had to sit down and think, well, okay, uh, what is this book about? What, what does this all add up to? Uh, and the very first thing I thought of, of writing down was, was that it was a vision of hell. Um, and I used the idea of, of hell as a, a bottomless pit. Uh, and I've always liked that idea because uh, I think it's accurate. Uh, you know, no matter how bad things are, no matter how dire your situation might be at any given time, it's always possible to make it that little bit worse. Uh, and it's always possible for someone else to make it that little bit worse for you on your behalf. So I think it's accurate. And I, I put that in the first line of the blurb. You'll see it when you buy the book. And you know, many copies for friends and so on. But then a really one, a weird sort of thing happened. Is that the same day that I wrote that blurb about hell, uh, I don't know if you caught this, uh, maybe I was the only one who noticed, but the Pope came out in the news and, and declared that hell doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, if you're a Roman Catholic, uh, technically there's no more hell. So I, in a way that's kind of good news, I suppose, and we can all celebrate that. But I thought it was sort of weird. It's like, you know, from, from memory, when I was in scripture school, Sunday school and that, uh, they used to tell me all the time that hell was a kind of wasteland. Uh, and that's why when Christ gets tempted, he goes out into the desert, he goes out into the wasteland. And the idea of the wasteland is this place where nothing good can come because there's no God. So nothing good can ever come from that place. Uh, so I thought it was kind of strange. Uh, and I think that's why the most important modernist English poet, T.S. Eliot, called his most important work The Wasteland, because he was basically, with his poem, showing the world what it might look like if people surrendered to their baser desires and gave up on their better selves. And the reason I'm going on about this is because, for some reason, based on Ian's art, which is actually a lot more innocent and and gentle than the artworks he produced last time round, Hugh and I came up with this world that is basically a vision of hell where instead of God, you have these malevolent spirits, and instead of turning the other cheek, everybody surrenders to the seduction of revenge and retribution, often violently and, 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 and endlessly. It's a cycle of horror, in a way, that we created. Uh, and don't let that dissuade you from buying the book. It's still a great read. And I think, in part, uh, that's, that's due to the fact that the stories themselves are punctuated by Ian's work, which, if you look around, no matter how sinister it gets, there always seems to be some magic innocence about them which kind of redeems them in a way. And I think that uh, Ian's art, not only as the, the, the person in charge of producing this book, but as the, the main contributor, uh, really redeemed Hugh and myself and our baser natures. Um, so I think if there's a moral to the collection that we created together, it's uh, to keep the home fires burning and stay true to the light, not to give in to your baser selves, your darker selves, and to be perfectly honest with you, I think that's not a bad message from three mountain men. Uh, you know, it could have been worse, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. And if you need any further inspiration, it's already been mentioned today, but uh, I, I believe Hugh is Skyping in on this very moment. Hi, Hugh. Hello, Hugh. Hi, Hugh. And he's, he's coming to us from the <laughs> Korean Peninsula. And at the last launch, he did the same thing. And it was under the threat of all-out war being likely hmm. in that part of the world. Um, and now it looks like, at least for the, the little at least for the near future, peace is going to prevail. Uh, so I think that's an inspirational message for this evening. Uh, it's only tangentially related, but that's okay. Uh, but what I would ask you to do is to please uh, raise your glasses, make some noise for Ian, art, and peace in our time. Thank you. <laughs>
Dad's hiding out the back there somewhere. Oh, see. oh no, he's sorry, he's gone for an ever more important uh, journey, which is to the bottle of because you guys seem to be drinking those drinks. Fair enough. Um, I was going to say, um, he's going to have to collect a bit more wood for this year. Five bucks. Um, good. And Anna, thank you so much for taking my photos. Um, where's, where's, where's Odin? <laughs> yeah, so I wrote a book for Odin. Um, please buy it. Um, all, 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 the, all the money that goes from the book will go towards getting a seat bed for him to help him read. Because he really wants to read books. So, what a, what a good way of doing it. So, thank you all for coming. Woo. Happy days. Yes. A bunch of your quizzes. A lot cleaner than I expected. Um, okay, um, a, bit, a little bit of housekeeping. As um, everyone's uh, indicated, not, not as adequately as we did, but there are some books at the sale in the, uh, in the upper box, so you can't miss it. Um, the, the Odin's book is just a minute of 10 <coughs> and um, Ian's book is 35, yeah. something like that, um, or something like that, don't quite run it, <laughs> see the person over there, that'll probably be me, but, um, but look, we, our, we're a little bit of a different gallery, I think you've heard this before, 